It's the 2023 Vivo Rio Pro. And last year, So using the surf forecast and checking some surf stats, I'm going to make my WSL fantasy picks. I'll select Kanoa out of the bunch, mostly because he's number five in my power rankings. So which fantasy team won the El Salvador Pro? Okay, a few important announcements before we talk about the winner. I'm officially closing the league to new teams after the Rio Pro event. So if you want to join, now is the time. Just go to oldsurfdad.com to register next to the Kelly Slater photo. And speaking of Kelly, he signed this year's trophy, which is a mini replica of Andy Iron's Rising Sun surfboard on a trophy base. That's it right there. It's insane. It's insane. Also, if you change your fantasy name, please re-register so that I can contact you if you win. I can't contact you if I don't have your email and I can't get you the trophy. Got it? Okay, cool. All right, now let's congratulate Mickey Wills, who won the El Salvador Pro. He was 16th in the world, and I think his choice to take Connor O'Leary set him apart with an extra 90 points. Great choice, Mickey. Finally, I want to say I think 40 Leaders to Freedom is my favorite new fantasy league name at the moment. I mean, dude, I can relate. My lost smooth operator never felt so good. Okay, time to check the surf forecast for Sakurama. Every single time, the WSL has been late to the party and missing epic swells right before the waiting period. And here we go again. Rio and the entire coast of Brazil has had an epic swell from Florianopolis to a few outer reef slabs in Rio. Remember, this just happened in El Salvador, too, when a double overhead swell hit three days before the waiting period. I mean, the only place that this hasn't happened to is the surf ranch. Anyway, looking into the forecast, we see contestable swell, and I think they start on the first day of the waiting period on the 23rd. The best days look to be Tuesday the 27th and Wednesday the 28th, and then the last two days of the waiting period are looking good as well. Will the WSL have the courage and patience to wait? And how will that affect your fantasy team? For example, when the El Salvador Pro went down a few days, I think Carissa Moore and Ian Gentile both cooled down and lost rhythm while it seemed to benefit Felipe and Caroline. We shall see. Okay, moving on. It's that time to nerd out a little. Let's look at some surf stats. <laughs> Lately, I've been referring you to my website, oldsurfdad.com, to check out the stats. But today, we're going to take a closer look at some key numbers to give you a Fantasy League advantage. From the home page, you can scroll down past where you can join the Fantasy League, and you'll see three areas of stats. Past results, power rankings, and the survival stats. Looking first at past results, you'll see the most recent event was last year in 2022, where Carissa Moore beat Joanne DeFay with a buzzer beater. And take note that there at an equal third is Tatiana. And there's Felipe, who won the last three events in Rio as we tap through. Because of COVID, 2018 and 2019 are the next latest events, which are a bit outdated, but it's the best info we have. You'll also see Tati is there again in the semis with an equal third. Moving to the power rankings, you'll see that Felipe is easily number one in the men's, winning the last three Rio Pro events, and we'll get back to that in a second. But I think it's important to know that I arrive at the power numbers by adding surfers heat scores. There's a description at the bottom of the power rankings page, and for those that want to really nerd out, 
there's links to the spreadsheets that I create with all the data. So let's get back to Felipe's three Rio event wins. Winning three events in a row has only been done four times. Kelly did it at Pipe in the mid-90s. MR and Carissa did it at Bell's, although a few decades apart. And Pauline Menzer also got three wins in a row in Rio in 1994, 1997, and 1998, although they were not consecutive years. So what do all those surfers have in common? They are all world champions. Now check this out. No one has done a four-peat, and Felipe has the opportunity to be the first. Now, he's coming off a win at El Salvador where he looked pretty damn unstoppable, but the odds are against him because it is also very rare to win successive events, like Jack Robinson did last year winning Margaret's and G-Land, or Carissa winning Margaret's and the Surf Ranch back-to-back this year. It's something seemingly reserved for the best of the best. Felipe could do both. You want to know my opinion on it? That's where you can check out the Fantasy Radar by scrolling down the homepage. And here's where I select my top pick, my dark horse, my warning surfer, and my hard pass. While the stats are facts, Fantasy Radar is my opinions and takes. Sometimes spot on, but not always. Agree or disagree, Take what you like and make your picks. If you are still live in survival, well, congratulations and I hate you. (laughs) I've been eliminated in both the OG survival and the losers league, but I continue to churn out the stats. And here you can see survival rates based again on the last three years. Past performance does not guarantee future results, but it sure does give you an idea of a surfer's history at a venue. All right, have I given enough to think about Let's make some fantasy picks. In women's tier A, I'm going to start by going off script and taking Tyler Wright. I can't explain this other than a gut feeling, and I don't think her fin-to-shoulder injury is serious, and she seems super focused. Now, Carissa, on the other hand, was nearly eliminated last year in Rio, even though she eventually won. Plus, she came out flat in El Salvador for the semis against Caroline. But as you can see in a video on my channel, she's been working on her air game and she's number one in the power rankings in Sakurama. But I'm going to ignore all of that and ignore Caroline and go with Tyler. Let me move on before I change my mind. In tier B, Molly and Steph are there for the taking, but I'm going with Tati, who will be at home in Brazil and has had two semifinal finishes here in the last three years. I'll also select Gabriella Bryan, who, like Tati, got equal third last year in Rio, and surfed well in the beach break. I went on and on about it in my Salvador coverage about how impressed I am with Gabriella Bryan's dedication to training and surfing before an event. I'm stoked on that pick. Moving to Tier C, you have three generations of powerful women surfing represented, and I like all of them. Betty Lou is surfing great on her forehand, and Joanne DeFay is probably the most versatile of the group, and nearly won last year, if not for Carissa's buzzer beater. But I'm going Sylvana Lima. And I know she's 38, but respect for the legend that she is. She's competitive and no stranger to Sacramento. Plus, she can be a giant killer and a wild card that can cause some havoc. Moving to men's tier A, Griffin and Joao went out in the elimination round last year, but I don't think that's going to happen again, and they're both solid picks. Meanwhile, Jack might still be nursing an injury, but he could completely go off here. By the way, congratulations to him and his wife, who have announced they have a baby on the way. Moving to Ethan Ewing, I think Ethan's style doesn't seem as impactful in this beachy, so I'm going with Felipe Toledo to see if he can win four in a row, and I'll take Gabriel Medina. All of a sudden, Gabriel Medina finds himself in the top five, and he usually gets better as the season progresses. Plus, I think he smells blood and is ready to unleash. Yes, in my last video, I said he was surfing flat, but I think he comes out firing in Rio. In Tier B, I promise not to take John John, who has broken our hearts this year with early exits. But the three surfers I wanted to take, Leo, Elo, and Kanoa, are all in the opening round heat together. So what am I going to do? Well, I'll select Kanoa out of the bunch, mostly because he's number five in my power rankings. I'll give John one last chance. 
I'll add Yagadora and throw in Ryan Callanan. That is my tier B mixtape. It's either an orchestra or a jazz disaster. We will see. In tier C, me and everyone else will be selecting last year's runner-up and Margaret River cut victim Sammy Pupo. If he was in tier B, I'd still pick him. Maybe even tier A. Meanwhile, an interesting scenario is developing where Rio Waeda needs to finish ahead of Jordy Smith to make the Olympics. That's some serious motivation. Now, Rio drives me crazy with his wild inconsistency, but it sure is fun to spectate, and I'll take him and all the drama. And there they are, the best picks in the world. Well, for me anyway. Tell me in the comments below where I got it right and where I'm going to tank. Also, mix in your power surfers who you got. I think I may be the first person to be on the beach when their survival pick went down in flames. Yep, I watched live in horror on the Puna Roca rocks as Ian Gentile took down my survival pick, Joao Chianca, who I thought was a safe bet. Plus, I thought that would keep some options open for future events with other surfers. Pro tip, always pick the best surfer, always. Worry about the future when it comes. Dang, big mistake for me, I'm out. For those of you still in, congrats. My survival stats are on oldsurfdad.com and you can find a link in the description below. Hey, can I tell all of you how much I appreciate you watching and subscribing to this channel? We just passed 2,000 subscribers this month. I'm so stoked. Thank you so much. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you're welcome to join us and it doesn't cost anything. Next up is one of my favorite venues, Jeffrey's Bay, and the waiting period starts July 13th. I will not be there live, but my goal is to be in South Africa for the event in 2024. Thanks for watching, and if you made it to the end of this video, please give it a like. But if you didn't like this video, leave a fire emoji in the comment to imply that you want it burned. All right, catch you later.